Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that I'm going to show you right now is insane footage. Have you guys seen the video of the gunman attempting to kill the pastor in the middle of his sermon? Yeah, we're about to walk through this entire thing, but understand something. The gun controllers and the left have actively campaigned legislation preventing firearms inside houses of worship, even with the permission of the pastor or leader of that congregation. What I'm about to show you is pretty insane footage, but it speaks to the point that you never know when evil is going to pop off and you have to answer it. And you might not want to be in the scenario of what I'm about to show you of having to tackle a guy who has a gun versus just dealing with the problem with equal fire. Everything is going to be linked right down there in the description box. I can't wait to hear what you guys think. And of course, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. And with that, let's get into this, beautiful people. I could not imagine being the pastor in the scenario of the clip I'm about to show you. Check this out. It happened in Pittsburgh on Sunday. A gun came through the doors of a Pennsylvania church. The pastor saying the gunman smiled at him before bringing the service to a stop with what happened next. This morning, the dramatic video from a church's live stream showing the moment Pastor Glenn Germany looked down the barrel of a gun. A gun they chose. Jesus! Jesus! He says he's grateful to God to be alive. Yeah, I, I would be too. Um, here's the thing. There's two points of this that I really want to drive home. One you never know when you're going to be in a scenario where someone insane decides to try to kill someone in front of you, particularly in a safe place like a uh, church during a sermon. You don't usually expect that to happen, but it's becoming more and more common where vulnerable places like this are going to be assaulted by madmen with guns. I guarantee you this guy, well, can't guarantee it. That'd be too aggressive. I have a high likelihood and suspicion that this gun was not bought through legal means. I'll put it to you that way. There was also a body discovered in this guy's house. So he was going to go for two out of two. And I quote, to clear his mind when he went to jail. That's actually a thing right there. He allegedly told Trooper Sikorsky that he attempted to shoot the pastor so he could go to jail and clear his mind. Okay. Now let's get to the second part about this. Then I'll show you some more clips on this. The Democrats being pushed at the request of the gun controllers have res openly restricted as much as they could in blue states the ability to have firearms in houses of worship, things of that nature. That has been an active push because those places are supposed to be for worship is their argument, so guns should be outlawed, even at the request and allowance of the pastor there. Now, in other red states, you've got entire security teams who are packing ready to defend anything like this. But would you want to be in a scenario like this and have to be the guy running after him and tackling him because you're going into a fight where you're not having equal firepower. Now, this guy is a hero. Don't get me wrong. The guy who tackled this guy showed a pair of cojones and that's incredible. But again, you're putting yourself at an automatic disadvantage when laws are meant to be uh, basically inhibit the ability of legal law-abiding lawful carriers, but they're enabling people who are breaking the law. This is quite literally a perfect example of criminals are going to criminal and they don't care about laws because if you're going to violate a law by, oh, I don't know, killing someone in order to clear your mind in jail, you're probably not going to be stopped by the idea of a lesser charge of carrying a gun into a safe area. You see, I mean, like this is a basic understanding that most people with common sense would understand. You don't really care about minor infractions on law like carrying a gun when you're not supposed to when your intent is to kill someone or to rob someone or to abduct someone. This is the point. Would you rather be forced to be the guy tackling him with no firearm, with no way to defend those around you other than just wrestling with someone with a firearm, or would you be able to meet the threat head on? It really is that simple, but I've got two more clips for you. Check this out. This is where they uh, say a little bit about the backstory. Gunman, the pastor says he had never seen before, interrupting Sunday sermon in North Braddock outside Pittsburgh. Pastor Germany says the man had come in and out of the church several times before making eye contact with him, standing up and pointing that gun at him. He pulled the trigger 
and a miracle of God happened that the gun got jammed. That bullet had a name on it. Clarence McCalliator putting his life on the line and his faith in God jumping into action, tackling the gunman. I respect the putting the faith in God. I respect that just trusting that it's going to work out. I'm go team. However, understand that this guy walked into this church never known. There were no red flags. There was no concerning behavior. There was no, ooh, we might want to watch out for that guy. Complete stranger decided to murder the pastor while he was delivering a sermon. You can't protect from that with laws. And that's the whole point. Yeah, sure. Have laws against murder. Of course. No kidding. But when you're inhibiting the ability of the the um, the congregation to defend themselves or have a dedicated security team to defend themselves and the congregation, you're making yourself a sitting duck at the behest of the lawmakers. Well, where the metal meets the road, the lawmakers aren't there. The people who are being affected by their laws, again, I want to reinforce, the people who are lawfully abiding the law are having the negative consequence of being disarmed while the criminals who have no issue whatsoever breaking the exact same laws now have the advantage that they can kill whoever they want. There was no way to prevent this. There was no way to know who was coming after who. There were no red flags, no nothing. There is a 0% chance anything gun controllers put forward would have stopped this. You know 100% what it would have? An armed congregation, an armed security member. I'm. You guys make your own decisions on this, but the very fact that you're creating sitting ducks, just like the gun-free zones we've seen across the board in different na national areas, you're creating an environment where a person with a gun has an immediate advantage because the lawful are following the laws while the criminals are not. You are creating a victimized area. That's what you're doing. And i got one more thing for you to wrap this up. Check this out. Yeah, truly. And as for that gunman, authorities now also saying they found a body when they searched his home. No word on a motive for all of this. That mystery now only deepening. The pastor tells us they will be back in church next week for service. You know what? Amen and pass the, uh, pass the cornbread. Hell yeah. Get back in church. Absolutely. I would recommend maybe a security plan. Just saying. The whole point here is as a society, the left is selling this idea that you can be a victim because the state will protect you. In this exact same scenario, there was zero chance that anything the gun controllers have put forward would have done anything on this. Zero. And that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.